The termite redemption arc begins now. These little might have a bad reputation as home wreckers, but it turns out some of them can produce hydrogen, the clean burning, non CO2 emitting fuel that can save the world. And I'm doing a PhD on introducing them to chemical engineering. Some thermites have a bacteria in their guts which strips the hydrogen off the cellulose found in wood and other materials like cotton found in clothing, whereby a circular economy can be created given that most wood and clothing ends up in landfills anyhow. Not only that, but they also have nitrogen fixing bacteria in their guts that remove removes nitrogen from air, which in addition to their normal respiration and breathing, means that they can remove some nitrogen and oxygen from air to output hydrogen, methane and CO2, which can easily be separated from each other with existing technology. Some species also live underground so they're well adapted to low oxygen conditions, which can contribute significantly to hydrogen purification. Not only that, but it turns out these little guys eat even faster when listening to rock and heavy metal music due to the heavy vibrations, so we can boost the hydrogen production even further. Hey, maybe we can play some Charlie XCX and see how brat they are. As if that wasn't good enough. They can produce nutrient-rich soil for use as organic fertilizer, and the eggs can be used to feed poultry and seafood instead of soy meal whose production contributes significantly to deforestation. Insects are a part of a chicken's natural protein intake, so the termite eggs might just give KFC the glow up it needed. The plan for the PhD is to model and quantify the termites' chemical reaction kinetics and stoichiometry, including oxygen consumption, hydrogen and CO2 and methane output rate, and heat emissions as a function of temperature and gas composition. With this exciting new line of research, not only can we one day design large-scale artificial termite hydrogen units, but we can also take steps towards extracting hydrogen from natural termite mounds, which would make termite hydrogen the new and real natural gas. The old one can f off. I'm sure you're pretty concerned about containing these little guys, but rest assured, they're actually killed by bright light, so they're much easier to contain than it might look. Wow, it takes don't look into the light to new levels, huh? Some of you may be wondering, why is he just sharing his idea out in the world like this and not being secretive about it? Well, that's because we're racing against time to fight climate change. We're not supposed to be racing each other. Plus, it's important to replicate results and use each other's findings to advance knowledge, so it's not really supposed to be a competition. There are also so many damn termite species to try and model and study. I don't need to gatekeep, there's no reason to. Competition produces incremental success, but cooperation produces exponential success. Termites embody that. This whole project is the crossover between A Bug's Life and Monsters Inc. we've all been waiting for. One day maybe, I can start my own energy company, and I can either call it Lifestream Energy as inspired by Final Fantasy VII, or Bugging Out Energy, which is self-explanatory. So how does one go about buying organisms like termites in a country in which they don't even natively exist in? Online retail, of course, and ants are us have us covered. Give us a few years and we'll be calling ourselves Hydrogen R Us. Oh brother, this guy stinks! We'll be buying a mated pair and 15 soldiers of the species Copotermes formosanus, which ants and Russ have informed us will be restocked in the new year. Copotermes formosanus are native to southern China, but have been introduced to other regions such as Florida and Hawaii. Really are nasty little aren't they? Speaking of accidental introduction, it would probably be a good time to cover the topic of containment. First and foremost, termites cannot climb very smooth surfaces such as smooth glass. Plus, many species such as Copotermes formosanus are averse to light, which really helps. Having this said, it is likely that even if a containment breach did occur, the termites would much rather prefer the confines of the enclosure, whose conditions are already perfect for them and stocked up with food, water and soil. In other words, we're gonna pepper those termites real good. Nonetheless, we'll certainly be researching secure containment along the way. Here's a pretty garbage mock-up of the enclosure, although we found a digitally temperature and humidity controlled enclosure with a whole host of other features known as the Biorb Earth 125. Although it's pretty pricey at almost £1,700, so my co-supervisor is considering cheap alternatives. We'll also need infrared cameras to monitor the termite population count and the heat emitted on a per-termite basis, and at this time we're considering purchasing from a company known as Teledyne Flare. although we're awaiting confirmation of certain features in the cameras after having reached out to them. Yeah, it would probably be a good time to speak about the alternative line of research if we're either unable to culture termites in the long term, or if the legal factors surround 
surrounding large-scale culturing of them proved to be insurmountable. As a backup, we are going to isolate the bacteria from their guts which are responsible for hydrogen extraction from cellulose. This has been achieved before, with the necessary facility available at the University of Birmingham Biosciences Department, and a method for termite gut bacteria extraction has been established in literature, and maybe there are even more which I haven't found just yet. So yeah, we're covered, we've got our bases covered. It should be stated that culturing insects in artificial environments isn't as straightforward as replicating the conditions they exist in in the wild. When my co-supervisor gave the example of breeding mosquitoes for the purpose of studying the West Nile virus, where in the wild, a rubber tire and some water were enough to get those nasty little to breed, yet the same success was not achieved in a theoretically perfect artificial environment. He also said that the characteristics of a species bred in captivity can change across generations, for the benefit and slash or detriment of the purpose they're bred for, so in one way or another, this whole study is gonna be interesting as hell. So you must be thinking, why even use live termites at all if we can extract the bacteria from their guts and give them the ecological risks of using live termites? Well, primarily because research has found that isolated termite gut bacterial cultures requires expensive pretreatments for the cellulose substrate to produce any viable amount of hydrogen, which was probably naturally achieved with termite saliva. Ladies and gentlemen and my beautiful non-binary people, the termites are here. I know they're so small that both they themselves and their movements are pretty hard to see, but they're here. Like for real, when I put them in the incubator and my eyes couldn't register their movements from afar, I was just like, did they just die or something? But just to run it back a little bit, when they arrived in the mail, yes your regular standard mail, I filmed the unboxing just to confirm their live arrival just in case anything happened along the way. I was gonna say right, it was bad enough worrying about the mailmen being the real fathers of kids but now they can carry termites too? Adds a whole new meaning to them being homewreckers eh? Hey, maybe dogs really are a man's best friend. I was a little bit worried that they would be kind of cramped in there, but it looked like they were fine. I was also a little bit surprised to see that the test tube was sealed with cotton, as I read that many termites can eat cotton as it contains cellulose, but our species can only eat wood, so I guess they'll hold out until the weekend. No cotton candy for them. By the way, here's the door to the temperature controlled insect room, formerly known as the bee room, and damn the whole thing just looks like the vault from Gringotts at this point. When Monday came, we relocated them to a bigger enclosure and found a thermal microscope to measure their heat emittance. In the previous episode, I mentioned using Coptotermes formosanus, a subterranean or underground species from the lush forests of southern China, but the retailer couldn't get a hold of them at this time, so instead, we used Calotermes flavicollis, or K. flavicollis for short, a dry wood or wood dwelling species from the golden coasts of the Mediterranean, and expectedly, the two are pretty damn different. Like no. Plus, Care requirements for C. formosanus are a bit more advanced, needing gel farms for a purpose I actually don't understand right now, whereas K. flavicollis does not need this. I suppose this worked out better as K. flavicollis is lower maintenance and is more suitable as our first experience with these little s**ts, so it's a bit of a blessing in disguise. The way I see it, the universe is on our side. This PhD even happening is a miracle in and of itself in the first place, so let's ride that wave baby. And yeah, this does mean that we've got a termite hydrogen PhD before GTA 6. Another experiment we're gonna run is feeding them wood powder, which could potentially improve the hydrogen production rate via faster digestion. Although we don't know if they can physically eat powder with their jaws, it's not like they have spoons. Hey, imagine if you had to consume powder without any hands or utensils. Oh wait, that is something people already do. Awkward. On that note, this video does not encourage drug use. Whatever you're going through, there are better ways forward that you might not be able to see right now. If you're having problems with drugs, please seek help. Speaking of drugs, this time nice legal drugs, one paper actually found that infusing certain antibiotics into their food actually increased the hydrogen production by 6 to 7 times as they suppressed bacteria in their guts which consumed hydrogen internally. These lucky termites are being fed, being given free medicine and protected.
protected from predators such as ants, ant eaters, and gorillas. In exchange for hydrogen energy, which they don't use anyway, nutrient-rich soil that they produce rapidly anyway, and their eggs and offspring that hopefully they're not gonna miss too much. Although we don't know just how territorial over their eggs they may get, so we'll just have to find out. This could be anywhere between Home Alone or Finding Nemo or John Wick. Speaking of reproduction, one day we could research how to speed up reproduction rates to grow some really huge domestic colonies capable of producing more and more hydrogen. The future possibilities really are endless, man. We just have to see how this thing goes, huh? To commemorate the arrival of the termites, I made a little drawing paying tribute to Margaret S. Collins, an African-American biologist who overcame racism and sexism to augment the field of termite biology. Thank you for everything you've done, Margaret. Termite hydrogen could be the game changer we need to defeat climate change, but a vast global effort is needed to turn things around in time to win the fight, and you can be a part of making that happen. There are almost 3,000 termite species to try and so many variables to experiment with, some of which we may not have even discovered yet. So I would like to kindly ask you to share this video with anybody you know on any platform, on your WhatsApp groups, on your Instagrams, on your LinkedIn's, on your Twitters, and any other platform you see fit. The hope is that other researchers around the world could be inspired to pursue the study of this new and upcoming field. I gotta tell you, my own supervisors were very quick to jump on board when I pitched it to them, so I'm hoping this video could spark the same thing in other people around the whole world, and we can get this wave going. Imagine if David Attenborough caught wind of this video and got involved. How amazing an 100th birthday present would it be next year for him to be part of saving the world? And you can be part of making that happen. All you gotta do is share this video wherever you can. That's all you gotta do. We can do this together. Anyway, thank you for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a lovely day.